In his seventh year as the voice of the Colonials, please welcome Mr. Byron Kerr. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. What a wonderful day and a special day for George Washington history as we uh, get started. Please, you can enjoy your salads and, and get started with lunch as we get the program underway. But uh, it's, it's exciting for me to be here and welcome you to the Cloyd Heck Marvin Center, the student union here at the George Washington University. We're here to induct, of course, eight members into the George Washington University Athletic Hall of Fame. As these eight individuals compose the 49th class the Hall of Fame grows to 144 members, many of whom are here with us today. Please join me in welcoming the current GW Athletic Hall of Fame members in attendance, and please hold your applause. Bill Collins, Tracy Early, Lynn George, Sheila Hoban, Sony Holland, Al Nadel, Devin McCalla Butler, Linda Miller, the chair of the board, Russ Ramsey, Pat Sullivan, Bob Talent, Corinne Hensley Thompson, Tanya Vogel, Durya Yavilar, and the daughter of Tech Silverman, Lisa Hardwood. Today's inductees will be permanently enshrined in the David and Abby Friedman Family Foundation George Washington University Athletic Hall of Fame, which is located on the mezzanine level of the Charles E. Smith Center. GW's Athletic Hall of Fame was founded with seven inaugural members in 1959, a group of which includes the late Red Arbach, this tradition of excellence continues today as we welcome them after lunch, of course, the eight new members into this prestigious group. And now we're going to introduce President Stephen Knapp for his remarks as we get the program underway. President. Well, thank you very much, uh, Byron. It's great to be here and see such a, uh, a large and enthusiastic uh, group gathered here today. Uh, it's a beautiful day here in Washington, and if you've been walking across campus, you've probably seen uh, large clumps of people crossing in all directions, being led by miraculously backward-walking students. Those are our wonderful uh, tour guides, and uh, it's, a, it's that time of year when, uh, when prospective students come to visit campus, and we're glad to see so many of them there. You know, for the last several years, every year we've had more applications than ever before, and our, our, uh, our student uh, body continues to be... Uh, more and more uh, academically competitive, and we're now, uh, we have real serious plans underway to make our athletic programs as competitive as they have ever been. You're going to hear about that when the next speaker comes up. He's going to tell you a little about some of the planning that the university has been doing and some of the investments that we're making to ensure that our student athletes here at the George Washington University are successful both on the field and in the classroom. But it really is an honor to welcome you to the Athletics Hall of Fame luncheon and induction, and I am delighted to acknowledge the chairman uh, of the George Washington University Board of Trustees, and I'll talk about him a little more in a moment, uh, Russ Ramsey. We also have Trustee Alan Fromm. Alan, wh where are you here? Uh, oh, there you are, right there, great. And thank you for being here. Alan is the chair of our Student Affairs Committee and was very actively involved in the planning that we just uh, undertook in, uh, for athletics and for our health and wellness programs. We also have, very glad to say we have with us today, the commissioner of our conference, the Atlantic 10, Commissioner Bernadette McGlade. Thank you so much for being here today. And of course, the members of the 49th class of the uh, Hall of Fame, uh, and um, uh, which bringing the number, as you heard earlier, to 144 members in total. And those who are joining the Hall of Fame today are really becoming part of a quite illustrious uh, community that includes the great uh, Red Auerbach, uh, coach and general manager of the Celtics, and Tex Silverman. Uh, Tex Silverman graduated in the class of 1953, and you heard that his uh, daughter is here today. Uh, he was uh, drafted, actually, when he graduated by, as I understand it, by the Knicks, but unfortunately was simultaneously drafted by Uncle Sam, <laughs> and so did not end up, uh, end up playing in the NBA. But we have honored him recently as we were renovating the uh, Charles E. Smith Center. The court at the Charles E. Smith Center now bears the name of Tex Silverman. So you are joining, uh, new members, inductees are joining quite a wonderful group by becoming our newest members of the Athletics Hall of Fame. And the next speaker actually is an alumnus in the class of 1981. And when he was here as a student, he, I think it's fair to say he owned second base. And uh, he is also a member of the Hall of Fame, and he currently serves as the chairman of our Board of Trustees. Please join me in welcoming Russ Ramsey. Uh, 
Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I um, uh, am very excited to be here this morning. And on behalf of the uh, entire Board of Trustees, I just want to welcome everyone and, and really try to just share with you the enthusiasm that exists throughout the entire Board of Trustees, um, not only for all of George Washington, and we just celebrated our 191st birthday, um, but really for the, the, the entire George Washington experience. And, you know, it's actually um, quite timely that we should be having this Hall of Fame ceremony and this induction, because I know for all of you out here who either, you know, had the sort of ability to play and the pride of wearing a jersey, those that supported everyone here. But more importantly, when I look at this Hall of Fame class, it really brings back for me, you know, many of those great memories that existed on campus here, you know, throughout both, you know, the playing days and, and being a student athlete, but certainly as many of you have been, you know, intimately involved in trying to steer this university to being the best it can be, you know, this is a day for me that's one of just filled with pride, pride for all that's been accomplished. And so along that line, what I, what I hope to do uh, very briefly here was just give you a little bit of background uh, about the new athletic strategic plan, which I hope many of you have, have had a chance to either look at or at least be briefed on. Um, because we've gotten, I would say, it's fair to say, record interest and enthusiasm uh, around our athletic department today, not just because we just made a new five-year commitment, which I'll talk about briefly, but more because it, it sort of is the right time and the right place, and it's coming from a place of strength, which is always important in anything you do in life. And so, just very briefly, the background of this, this commitment, um, which is both funding its fields, its resources, its coaches, is all the things that are important to having a program that is at its ability to be its best. But the background really came from a source of strength with the renovation of the Smith Center, which has really been the center of athletics for everyone here. And it was really through that that a number of trustees, including Randy Levine, who chaired the special committee and knows a little bit about both life here as a former hoop player, but as president of the New York Yankees, he obviously lives and breathes every day great organizations and great leadership. And so when he looked at what existed here and, and was willing to kind of take a whole process that invo involved everyone in the, in the university, current athletes, current coaches, trustee, administration, and really look at what's been built under the leadership of Jack Vance and under the leadership of Bob Chernak and think about what's possible. And so in doing that work, and I, I know we have the commissioner of the A-10 here, so you know, we'll, we'll be very clear that you know, our aspirations are to continue to doing the things that are so important in terms of graduating uh, our students, in terms of attracting the best and the brightest. But, but importantly, we also want to take that source of pride that everyone here remembers and bring it to the athletic field. And so in looking at how we were coming about our resources, we, we surveyed all 14 uh, peers in the, in the Atlantic 10, and we realized that we were 13th out of 14th in funding. And when you compare that to everything that was happening across the university, it just didn't add up that we could be, you know, having as much momentum across everything we're doing, but we weren't giving our student athletes uh, the resources that are so important to be able to be the best that you can be. And so I'm just very excited to have been a part of the whole process, and, and, and there's several members of the committee here, including Steve Doherty and, uh, and others, who were so intimate in, in sort of taking this, and at the end of the day, the, 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 the reason and the enthusiasm is as follows. As everybody in this room knows that we had the, the, really the history of being able to wear a uniform, you know that when you come here as a full-time job as a student, you also take on a full-time job as an athlete. And for those 425 athletes that show up every day, and we ask them to take on another full-time job, what we want to make sure is that each of them, when they go out there, believe they have the resources and the tools to be the best they can be. Now, people say, well, what does that mean? Well, I don't know what it means. It means that we can be the best that we can be. And so when we look at, our, at, the, univer at the universities that, and, and the ones that we know have been successful, where it's, whether it's basketball at Duke or it's the, you know, the, the, uh, the Doug Flutie moment at BC or it's Northwestern and the Rose Bowl moment or others, those are universities that are very similar in size and scope to us. And this athletic department is going to give us the same pride and joy and, and enthusiasm, in my opinion, that those other places have given to many of their alumni and will continue to do. And so with that, uh, I welcome everyone. I thank you for everything you've done to get us here and certainly hope you'll be a part of this journey and participate. Uh, with, uh, with our newest uh, leader, uh, Patrick Nero, who's going to come up and, and uh, share with you a few of the things that are going on specifically. Patrick.
Well, good afternoon. It's uh, wonderful to be here and to see such a great crowd. I'm Patrick Nero. I started about eight months ago here at GW uh, as athletic director, and uh, I speak this morning on behalf of all 425 of our student athletes and all of our coaches and administrators, many uh, who are here this morning to join you. Um, I want to begin just by introducing a couple of people who've been really key, uh, not only to our past, but also uh, to our future, and just thank them. Uh, first, we have two of our senior university administrators here, two vice presidents. Uh, the first is uh, Michael Morsberger. Mike, if you can just stand. Thank you. Mike is our, our VP for development, and as we move forward uh, for the, the next generation of GW Athletics, uh, Mike's going to play a key role in that and working with us and, and our fundraising organization that we just started uh, within the last couple of weeks. Uh, next, uh, it's really an honor to, to say thank you and to introduce uh, someone you'll, you'll hear a few words from in a few minutes, but um, I just can't tell anyone in this room who's been around for the last 24 years what this gentleman has meant to the GW athletic program and what he's meant to our student athletes. And I just want to thank him on behalf of not only our current, but every student athlete here, and that's Senior Vice President Bob Chernak. <laughs> Over the last several weeks, and hopefully uh, for a long time to come, you will hear a lot about uh, what the future of GW athletics uh, will be like and what our, how our student athletes will be expected to perform and, perform and how we will support them to perform. But today, on their behalf, I want to just say a word about our seven inductees uh, and what they mean to us. Uh, because our past will be our foundation, as I spoke to them a little bit about before we came in here, and we really want to build upon their success and, and lift our young people up on, on their shoulders and, and accomplish what we can accomplish based on uh, their foundation. Uh, so just a few words uh, to each of the, uh, the inductees. First, uh, to, to Mike Bassett, uh, who was a leader of our baseball program in one of the most successful runs that we've ever had in baseball. Uh, he proved that GW can be successful, and it's because of feats such as Mike's that we now have the confidence to build a brand new baseball stadium and provide the resources to that program uh, that allow it to get back to where we feel it can go. Um, so Mike, thank you very much on behalf of our, our baseball program. Uh, to Tina Brown. Uh, Tina graduated 22 years ago and today still sets the standard uh, for GW rowing. Uh, she led the team to becoming uh, one of the top teams in the country and as an individual represented GW uh, in the Olympics. Uh, she represented GW and the United States. So uh, as we talk to our current student athletes and recruit our future GW rowers, uh, you're the person uh, that we'll, we will continue to point to and say that's what we want GW rowing to be about. So thank you very much. To Joe McEwen, uh, you built something here at GW that no one could have ever imagined. Uh, you built a national program in women's basketball uh, that not only developed championships, uh, but you developed championship people. Um, everyone who, across the country who followed GW basketball, women's basketball, knew the success that Joe's teams had on the court. Um, but those that are close to GW, and for myself, who's had an opportunity to meet so many of his former student athletes, uh, Joe, we know the type of young people you developed off the court, and so for that, we're ever thankful. Thank you very much. Um, Chris, Chris Monroe can't be here today. Uh, he's in a land far, far away, which Chris tends to do uh, every year, um, but his mom is here, and I just, uh, I know she'll deliver this message uh, to Chris. Um, we've had an opportunity, most of us, to get to know Chris a little bit. He was here all summer working out with our guys, but... Um, you realize pretty quick when you get to know him. Uh, I would say he's a, uh, a man that has a heart of gold and yet at the same time a heart of steel at the same time. Uh, he is passionate and determined. Uh, today he remains the leading scorer in GW men's basketball history. Um, well, I'm sure Chris is proud of that. I also get the feeling he's the type of guy uh, that he would be so thrilled for the person who breaks his record. Um, our, to watch Chris interact with our guys this summer, to serve as a mentor to our seniors, um, his presence, his demeanor, his character, and his determination uh, were a daily lesson for our student athletes. So I hope uh, when you talk to him, uh, we say congratulations on the great basketball career, um, congratulations on being in the Hall of Fame, but most importantly for serving as a mentor and a role model for our men's basketball team. Um, Shantae Rogers. Uh, Shantae energized a campus and a community 
and anyone who watched college basketball. Um, prior to arriving at GW, I didn't know much about GW basketball, but I did know that Shante Rogers was the most exciting player in the country to watch. Uh, he was a competitor and he was a winner. Uh, no one could take over a game like Shante. Uh, when you watch Shante Rogers, you saw someone who was just fearless. Um, Shante, thank you for the passion and the pride that you brought to GW. Jim Tall led our prog tennis programs to unprecedented success. It was an era where GW Tennis was at the top. Uh, and we, we, We're slowly getting back there and we are getting back there, but his success in both singles and doubles led us to three straight conference championships. Uh, 50 years later, he's still among the top of the Southern Conference in career victories. Our men's tennis program right now is coming off an Atlantic 10 championship season, and 50 years later, we're using Jim's success to a path to re uh, repeat championships. After GW, Jim represented the university and his country proud by serving as a helicopter pilot in the Vietnam War. So to all his service to GW and to the country, we thank Jim and his family. Uh, Ingrid Wicker McKee was a, wo a woman's volleyball stand standout at GW who combined her passion for sport and knowledge. She loved her student athlete experience so much she's never left it behind. Today, she stands for all that is good in intercollegiate athletics. As a coach, administrator, and leader, she spends every day taking what she learned at GW to impact her student athletes at North Carolina Central University. For that, Ingrid, we say thank you very much. Uh, for me, I, I saved uh, the easiest for last. Um, some people might not want to or be a little bit intimidated to follow a Hall of Famer, uh, but I couldn't be more proud. Uh, to follow in the steps of Jack Cavance. Um, I can't tell you what a great friend he has been to me, what a great supporter. Uh, he is a gentleman, uh, and he is one of the most respected administrators uh, in college athletics. And for 17 years, he gave everything he had to our student athletes and to this university. And for that, I can't tell you how proud I am to follow in your footsteps and say thank you. Enjoy, enjoy the day, enjoy your families. Um, we're hoping to have a great crowd at our basketball game and hopefully a great win. So thank you very much for being here. We'd like to continue the program now. Thank you very much. I hope you're enjoying your lunch and your desserts as we uh, continue on this beautiful Saturday. There's uh, some coaches and dignitaries also that we'd like to recognize who are here at the uh, Marvin Center as well. And uh, some of the coaches that are uh, presently here We'd like to introduce, and all you have to do is stand up and wave. Mark Davis, men's rowing, is here today. Uh, Greg Munoz from tennis is here, men's tennis. Mike Bozeman, women's basketball coach, is here today. And from the men's basketball team, coach Mike Lonergan is here. It is also an indeed an honor to introduce former rowing coach and current Hall of Famer Paul Wilkins is here today. And the current president of the George Washington Alumni Association, Jim Corr. Ladies and gentlemen, as you continue to enjoy lunch and your dessert, I'd like to commence with what we're going to all here today to enjoy is to celebrate the eight inductees as they become the 49th class of George Washington's Athletic Hall of Fame. At this time, I'd like to bring back Patrick Nero to the stage to help us welcome Dr. Bob Chernek. When Bob came to George Washington in 1988, the GW men's basketball team had a 1-27 record, GW women's basketball had a 9-19 record, and the university had a total of 16 varsity teams. Today, there are 23 varsity teams, and both men's and women's basketball have since reached the NCAA tournament a combined 23 times. Dr. Chernek is retiring as Senior Vice Provost and Vice President of Student and Academic Services at the end of the academic year but he leaves the athletics program poised and positioned to be a major player on the national stage. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Chernak to the stage and in thanking him for his invaluable contributions to all of GW. Dr. Bob Chernak.
Thank you very much, Byron, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, first off, uh, we heard some of the comments from uh, Russ Ramsey, the chairman of our board, but I, I'd like to reiterate a couple of things that he said. Uh, number one, uh, you heard from just the listing of names uh, that were read, uh, how uh, esteemed the group has been inducted into the GW Athletic Hall of Fame over the years. Uh, but I have to tell you, I've been here a long time. And during the 24 years that I've been here, and this is no disrespect to any of our former inductees, but as a group, as a class, this is probably one of the strongest classes that I've had a chance to see be inducted into the GW Athletic Hall of Fame, and I congratulate all of you. Uh, I am actually pinch hitting today for Mary Jo Warner, who was the nominee of the gentleman I am going to be introducing to you. Uh, Mary Jo is away in uh, California at, his, at her uh, son's wedding and regrets that she can't be here to read some of the comments that she made about Jack, which were taken under consideration by the committee uh, in inducting him today. Now, if it were I, I probably would have put forward some slightly different criteria than Mary Jo. Uh, I've had a chance to uh, sit with Jack at a myriad of basketball games over the years, home and away. And one of the things that always amazed me about Jack is that he's never made a bad coaching decision. He's never made a bad official's call from the stands in all of those games. So I thought, well, that's pretty good criteria to put forward to get someone inducted. But thankfully, Mary Jo came up with better criteria uh, that uh, certainly uh, presented a very worthy case for Jack. Um, a lot of what I'm going to say, you probably could read for yourself in the program. Uh, it's truly been uh, an astonishing career that Jack has had uh, since he graduated from Boston College. Uh, it's no secret that Jack was a great high school basketball player, uh, and uh, he has uh, received several accolades for that, including being already inducted into the New England Basketball Hall of Fame. Uh, I think he even made the old-timers Hall of Fame or something in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And that was in 1999. So you guys can do the math, you know, when he was an old timer in 1999. Uh, he had an outstanding career in uh, Boston College. Uh, he was even the uh, scholar athlete of his graduating class from Boston College. Jack, I assume there were more than one people graduating in that, that year. <laughs> And anyway, uh, not surprisingly, and, you know, at BC, he was the, uh, voted the best player in New England under six feet. And then after Boston College, uh, Jack went on uh, to pursue a career that he really loved. And that career was in athletics. Uh, he coached at the high school level at Massac High School in Connecticut. Uh, he went on to uh, be a college coach at Brown and Catholic universities. Uh, decided uh, after a, a successful coaching career at Catholic uh, to go into athletic administration and he assumed the athletic director position at Catholic. Uh, was there for a while and then was attracted to George Mason University where he served for 12 years as athletic director at uh, the other George across the river. And then in 1994, we were very fortunate to uh, have Jack uh, be attracted to the job here at the George Washington University. And uh, I think that I can say, uh, because I've seen it firsthand, that Jack's accomplishments here at GW uh, are really extraordinary. Um, and in fact, uh, maybe even unparalleled uh, from many different perspectives. Uh, Jack is a unique guy. I mean, you know, there's no pretentious air about Jack Cavant, uh, and he doesn't like to uh, accept accolades. accolades. Um, you know, he's always the kind of guy who will come up to you and say, hey, I got a joke for you. 
and he would tell you uh, about his favorite story again and again <laughs> and again. That's the same joke again, again, and again. He forgets he told it to you before. So, you know, I'm sure that Jack will have some story to tell us if he has a chance to get to the microphone. But the thing that really makes Jack's career here at GW so extraordinary is all of the accomplishments that some of them you heard referred to already uh, that took place here during those 17 years. Now, I, I don't have the time here because I'm only given five minutes uh, to name all of them, but let me just paraphrase a couple from memory. First, you heard a reference to NCAA tournament appearances. There have been dozens and dozens of tournament appearances by GW men and women's teams over those 17 years as athletic director uh, that he has served. Uh, and, and, and the thing that's particularly interesting is it's been men and women's sports. You, you know, when I came here in 1988, we had two separate departments, a department of men's athletics and a department of women's athletics. And then under Steve Bilski initially, we merged those departments. And one of the things that I always admired about Jack as he came on board in 1994 was that he had a sustained commitment to make sure that our women's uh, intercollegiate athletic programs excelled. And they did. Um, Many of those victories that I refer to as NCAA appearances are due to Joe McEwen, one of today's inductees, uh, probably half of them. Um, <laughs> at least he alleges. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we saw an expansion of programs uh, up to 22 uh, intercollegiate sports. We saw a tremendous uh, improvement and expansion in facilities. Uh, not just the Smith Center that's the most visible, but the acquisition of Mount Vernon and Jack coming up to the plate and saying, hey, it's important that we use some of the land there for athletic use, and we built a softball field and lacrosse field and tennis courts. Uh, if you, you, know, you heard that Bernie McGlade is here as commissioner of the Atlantic 10. I can't tell you the number of times that George Washington University under Jack's watch had the best GPA and the best graduation rates for student athletes in the Atlantic 10 over a long duration. And that's partly because it reflects Jack's values, uh, which really uh, define him as an individual. I might also add that um, what you don't realize is Jack is, as in addition to being the executive director of athletics, has for many, many years been a member of the senior administrative staff of SAS. Student Academic Support Services, where uh, oftentimes, as we met every week, we would be deliberating over very complex, difficult issues. And Jack always had the uncanny ability to chime in at just the appropriate moment uh, to get us to come to some conclusion as we wrestled with those problems. And he usually said, it's time for lunch, guys. Let's just wrap it up. <laughs> so uh, generally, we wrapped it up and we went to eat and we came to a decision. So you know, I always want to thank you, Jack, for, for that major input into the divisional priorities. But Jack has been a good colleague and friend of mine, maybe probably my closest friend and colleague for almost all the time that I've been here. Uh, I really want to congratulate you and honor you, Jack, uh, for today's induction. It is certainly uh, so well deserved on so many fronts. and I. I think it's particularly noteworthy that your son Scott flew in for, by surprise from California and Courtney came up from North Carolina. Uh, Wendy was here already, but she decided to come. Uh, your wife Janice, and, and you should uh, feel very proud of the accomplishments of your dad and, uh, and your husband Janice uh, for all that he's not only done here at GW, but throughout his whole career. I, this is a man not only honored by GW, but he's been honored so many times by his external peers. Jack has served on a prestigious NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Committee. He's been president of the athletic directors of uh, the Atlantic 10 Conference. These, these leadership positions don't just uh, derive from popularity, although I'm sure that had a lot to do with it. It has to do with people's esteem of this man, of his uh, professionalism, and knowledge. The man has maintained more contacts in the athletic world than all the entries in the Encyclopedia Britannica combined. And uh, everyone in, in, in basketball and in college athletics knows 
Jack Cavance, and no one will ever say a bad word about him. And so congratulations. I have one other person who wants to just get up, say a couple of words, the chairman of the Student Affairs Committee, uh, a good friend of yours, Alan Fromm, who flew in specially from North Carolina just to take the mic for a couple of seconds. Thank you. Uh, when I heard that there was a uh, free meal of steak and fish, uh, which we don't have together in North Carolina that often, I thought I might come up for it. So I appreciate that. Um, every time I come on this campus, uh, I have a special feeling. I truly do. Uh, uh, I'm not fortunate enough to be here every day, but, but I love this place. We're kind of like family. I really feel that way. And um, I'm looking out here and I'm seeing Lots of wonderful people uh, who I've had the pleasure of knowing for years and years. Uh, a lot of these, these great athletes uh, who are currently in the Hall of Fame and the new inductees, congratulations. It's wonderful to see y'all. Y'all bring back terrific memories. We're, we're proud of all of you, uh, and, but today is a special day for the new inductees. Um, we're not only proud of what you did while you were here, but we're also proud of what you have done once you've left this university. I was looking through the program and every single one of you are making a difference to other people and helping them achieve their goals as people achieved, as, as other people helped you achieve their goals. Um, so again, congratulations uh, to all of you uh, Jack is, has been a, a very, very special friend for uh, a long time, 17 years. I met him, uh, first time I met you was when we played down at Duke. Uh, I've gotten to know him over the years, not only Jack, but his family, Janice, Scott, Courtney, Wendy. Thank you so much for uh, being such a large part of this university. It's a real family affair. I've enjoyed trips with you. Uh, we've spent many hours uh, talking to one another about everything under the sun. Uh, I called him up a couple of weeks ago on his cell phone to check in, and uh, Wendy has uh, given him another full-time job. He is babysitting grandchildren. Uh, he was not in control of the situation when I called him. <laughs> they were yelling and screaming, and Jack was just fine. I mean, you know... <laughs> Thank God Wendy just walked in and rescued uh, the children from Jack. But I know he, he, he enjoys that, that part of it as well. I also would be remiss, I know it's a, a Hall of Fame day, but I do want to say something about my very good friend, um, Bob Chernak. Uh, he's retiring this year, and uh, uh, I don't think anyone uh, has done any more to help uh, and perpetuate our athletic tradition than Bob Chernak. He has been a wonderful friend. Uh, he and Linda and Jackie, who, who is not here today, have been phenomenal friends uh, to me and to this university for so, so many years. And uh, although uh, you're stepping down, you're still gonna be here, and I look forward to that. As I said at our Board of Trustees meeting, um, I've known Jack 17 years, I've known Bob 22 years, uh, and I've had relationships with them longer than I did both my ex-wives put together. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know what more I can say other than that. <laughs> But in any event, it is a wonderful day. Welcome back, welcome home to everyone, because I'm sure we all have very fond memories of this place, and they're just gonna keep on getting better. Thank you. Jack's gonna come to the stage now to accept his plaque from the athletic director, Patrick Nero.
Thank you very much. A couple things before I start. One is, I'm old enough to know who Red and Tex were. All right, and the second thing is that I think Bob and I will make a great golf team and we'll take as many strokes as you give us. All right, at the outset, I'd like to congratulate my fellow inductees. They've worked very hard, and this is a great honor. Congratulations. Please give them a round of applause. I'd also like to thank the selection committee for their hard work, and more importantly, for putting me in the class of 2012. Thank you. Will you please stand and be recognized? Rodney, you gotta get up. Thank you very much. It's very rewarding to me to be inducted into the 212 GW Hall of Fame with all these quality people. It's especially rewarding to me because of a former coach and a man I have a great deal of respect for is also being inducted. The other thing is there are several, several, now I'm really getting old, several people who are being inducted that I have seen grown up to be great people. I saw them when they were very young and they've all become great people. And I'm, very, I'm a very fortunate man for that. Those of you who know me know that I'm a Yankee fan in a sea of Red Sox fans. I would like to take an idea that I, to, she, to be honored in this award from a Yankee great named Lou Gehrig. Mr. Gehrig was proud to be a Yankee and I'm proud to be associated with the Colonials. In a speech at Yankee Stadium, Mr. Gehrig called himself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. I changed that. I'm the most fortunate man on the face of the earth. Fortunate for having a wife, Janice, who understood about the time demands of the job and allowed me to accomplish many of the things that led me to this great honor. Fortunate that our three children who are with us today understood that daddy would not be at all their games because he was working. Fortunate for having a good guy as a son-in-law and fortunate for having three healthy and outstanding grandchildren. I was also fortunate that I worked for a man who taught me about student life, but more importantly, as a good friend. Bob and Linda, I cannot begin to tell you how Janice and I feel about the both of you. I was fortunate to have a great administrative staff. They accomplished many things that made me look good. To them, I can only say thanks. The student athletes at UW during my tenure were outstanding. I doubt if you're aware of all the things that the student athletes are asked to be responsible for, but at UW, they did that and then some. All I can say to them is, thanks for a great experience. The coaching staff during my years at UW was made up of men and women who cared about their student athletes. They were all good people. Janice and I are fortunate that many of the GW fans and alumni have become good friends. I'm fortunate that Patrick Nero, who has gone out of his way for me on many occasions, has taken over the leadership of the department. Patrick is a good man and will represent GW very well. When I found out about this honor, I tried to think of things that I had accomplished during my 17 years at GW and then decide which one I would remember. I came up with a few things in no particular order. I was watching Joe and his teams go to all those NCAA tournaments. I know how hard they worked to accomplish that, but I have to tell you, it almost seemed automatic. Winning the A-10 championships, Bernie takes an awful lot for being here today. I appreciate it. Having the men's basketball team appear in three straight NCAA tournaments. Being seated, seated the highest in GW in men's basketball history. Being ranked in the top 10 in men's basketball. 
having the men's basketball team go undefeated in league play. Becoming a member of the NCAA Men's Basketball Committee. Never having a major violation of NCAA rules in over 30 years as an administrator. Never having a violation. During my tenure at GW, over 96% of the student athletes who used up their eligibility graduated. But the number one experience, I feel like David Letterman here, but the number one experience I had at GW is my relationship with Arnold Red Arvac. I could tell Red's stories all afternoon, but I won't. Red had a lunch at 11 o'clock and it was always Chinese. That lunch is still going strong. And I'd like to thank George and Rob and Aubrey for being here today, because they're part of that lunch bunch. I wish you'd stand and be recognized. <laughs> we have been meeting on Wednesdays at 11 o'clock for almost 20 years. All right? You know, Joe McEwen was part of that lunch bunch. When he was around, Joe was part of the lunch bunch. And I'm sure on Tuesdays, when he's sitting in his office in Chicago, He's thinking about what's going on at lunch. Lunch, 11 o'clock in the morning. Great lunch. Again, this induction into the GW Hall of Fame is very meaningful to me. As you get more gray or white hair, if you're fortunate to have any hair at all, you may receive many honors. But I'll tell you this. I will always cherish being a member of the GW Hall of Fame. I'm a very, very fortunate man. Thank you very much. We continue our program with Mike Bassett. Mike Bassett concluded his career as one of the best players in George Washington baseball history. In his senior season, he helped the Colonials to their fourth Atlantic 10 championship and the program's first NCAA tournament appearance in 10 years. Bassett was selected by the Cincinnati Reds in the 11th round of the 2002 Major League Baseball Amateur Draft. After setting seven career records, five of which still stand, Bassett currently holds the GW record for games played, at-bats, RBIs, home runs, and total bases while ranking second all-time in runs, hits, and doubles. He also owns single-season records for games, at-bats, and RBIs. Bassett was named to the NCAA All-American team following his senior season in 2002, and was also selected to the NCAA All-East Region First team that season. He was tabbed as the most outstanding player of the Atlantic 10 Championship Tournament in 2002, and is a two-time Atlantic 10 All-Conference First Team selection. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mike Bassett. It's an honor to be here in front of everybody, all these distinguished people. Um, I'd like to thank, first of all, the George Washington University Athletic Department for putting this special event together. Uh, it's, it's an accomplishment and an honor to be part of the 2012 Hall of Fame class. My athletic career was a result of the help and support of many people, which I'd like to mention and acknowledge today. I'd like to thank my father for throwing countless batting practice as a, as a child, occasionally throwing at me, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, he, he threw me count, countless batting practice, which instilled uh, a strong work ethic in uh, what, it, what it takes to be successful. I'd like to acknowledge uh, coaches at the time, Tom Walter and Joe Rakuya, 
for assembling a, a talented championship team that had amazing chemistry. Uh, I'd also like to thank teammates that are here currently, uh, Matt Krimmel and Chris Worth, for being the type of friends that would do anything in their power to help, no matter what the situation. I'd also like to thank the uh, GW Athletic Academic Support, uh, and, uh, especially Sheila Hoban, who's a Hall of Fame member here, uh, for, for all, the, all the athletic and uh, academic support that it took to get a four-year degree here at GW, which was tremendous. Uh, my career was stopped short because uh, of a couple of injuries, but uh, that four-year degree in finance uh, helped that a lot because now I'm a financial advisor at uh, AXA Equitable, which is a fantastic firm. Uh, today I'm blessed to have a beautiful wife, Samantha, of four years, and two daughters, Kylie and Lola, three and one. Uh, I carry all the memories of the four-year experience to this day. Thank you very much. Tina Brown is one of the most accomplished women's rowers in the history of George Washington University. The 1990 Lynn George Outstanding Female Athlete Award recipient, Brown was instrumental in helping the GW Varsity Four to some of its best finishes in program history, including victories in the 1990 Dad Vale Regatta and consecutive second place finishes at the Collegiate Nationals in 1989 and 1990. Brown is one of the three female rowers from George Washington to represent the United States at the national level, as she competed in the 1992 Summer Olympics in Barcelona, Spain. Brown returned to GW in 1993 as an assistant coach and helped head coach Paul Wilkins guide the Colonials to an unprecedented run of success. She currently serves as head rowing coach at Orcas Island Rowing Association in Olga, Washington. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tina Brown. humbled to be up here <laughs> and be one of this class. So thank you very much to George Washington University. Um, what I'd like to um, bring up is the mentors in my life. And um, as most of us will agree, I'd first like to thank my mom and dad for all that they gave me. <laughs> and I'd like to thank my coach, Paul Wilkins, for nominating me and also being my coach, and all the coaches of my life, he's my coach. He has been a mentor and somebody who I've looked back to and thought about what he taught me, and it's um, carried through to today, and I coach a small team now. <laughs> um, and my brother, Charlie, who is, couldn't be here today, he uh, had rode before me at the uh, George Washington University, and the first time I, I um, saw a regatta was in Boston, and I came up, I was a freshman in high school and my brother was in college and it was ahead of the Charles and Paul saw me. He saw my brother who was rowing and he saw me. He looked at my parents and he goes, do you have any more? <laughs> so um, I had a, a fortunate uh, first year as a rower and I did really well in a land rowing competition and my, I, I won the Mid-Atlantic Erg Sprints and my brother um, actually pushed and sent me to another well, event in Boston, which was bigger, and that's where I got recognized to be on, to be watched by the national team members and move on. So anyway, it was, he was a very influential man. I'd like to thank also um, my friends, Mora and her hu husband and son for coming up. And Mora was supportive, not just in rowing, we trained together as well, but also in my artistic uh, venues. And I would like to thank her for that. Um, and also, when I was training for the Olympics, I trained out in Seattle, and I lived with a wonderful woman and her daughter, Kim. 
and both of them have been wonderful women in my life, and I'd like to acknowledge her. And she's also a GW alum, and she's here, which is wonderful. Thank you. And I was very fortunate after the Olympics to be able to come back and coach here at George Washington. I always felt really fortunate to have come back and been part of this community um, and made a difference, I think, I hope. And uh, again with Paul, which was um, fun. <laughs> it was fun to be with him as a coach and not just an athlete. So, and, um, and currently in my life, I have some amazing mentors. I have an, um, my husband, Toby, and his parents, Millie and Jim, who are just amazing and wonderful people who have supported me. I have a unique lifestyle, and um, <laughs> they all support what I do with my artistic endeavors. I currently am a volunteer head coach for a rowing program, and we have 17 kids. It's very small, but we do really, really well. It's really fun. Um, so thank you again to GW, and I appreciate all that it's given me. So thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Tina. Joe McEwen is widely recognized as one of the top women's college basketball coaches in the game. A record five-time winner of the Atlantic 10 Coach of the Year Award and two-time National Coach of the Year nominee, McEwen is George Washington's all-time winningest coach with 441 wins and the highest winning percentage as his teams averaged over 23 victories in 19 seasons from 89 to 2008. In the 1991-92 season, he led the Colonials to a national ranking of sixth, the highest ranking for any women's program in the history of George Washington Athletics. From 1991 to 1998, the team posted eight consecutive 20-win seasons, including five A-10 titles. His 96-97 team, which advanced to the Elite Eight of the NCAA tournament, won 22 consecutive games. During his season, it finished the Atlantic 10 portion of the schedule with a perfect 16-0 record. In 2007, he led the team to a 28-4 record with a perfect 14-0 conference mark and broke the school record with an 875 winning percentage. The 34th coach in the NCAA history to win 500 or more games, McEwen has led the Colonials to 15 NCAA tournament appearances where they won their first round game 13 times. He won the Atlantic 10 regular season or tournament title 14 of his 19 seasons at GW and in his career has coached 17 players who went on to play professionally, and five were WNBA draft picks. Equally as impressive as GW's success on the court under McEwen was its outstanding performance in the classroom. During McEwen's tenure, George Washington players received Atlantic 10 academic all-conference recognition 17 times, and eight players were named COSIDA academic all-district selections with three academic All-Americans. McEwen also coached a Rhodes Scholar nominee and a Fulbright Scholarship winner. Other former student athletes under McEwen's guidance include a GW School of Business Distinguished Scholar Award, an NCAA Women of the Year representative, and two Atlantic 10 Student Athletes of the Year. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Joe McEwen. I apologize in advance. I, I was recruited by the great Jim Valvano, who, uh, who never had a speech he didn't go over. And, and uh, just, I just want to thank you. Uh, on behalf of the McEwen family, we, uh, we came in last night from Chicago. Uh, my wife and my daughters had not been back since we took the job at Northwestern uh, three and a half years ago. And uh, it, it's just a surreal, um, uh, hard, difficult, but yet uh, it was just amazing to be back here this weekend. And um, I, I do want to take a second to introduce my family. My daughter, Allison, who was born at GW Hospital, who, who is a point guard in Glencoe. And, uh, 
and is a great gymnast, and uh, maybe, maybe Margie Cunningham might give her a shot in a couple of years. Um, my daughter Megan, who was born at GW Hospital, was a GW cheerleader uh, in the early 90s when Sony Holland was a great player, and, and Coach Jarvis, and uh, is now a shooting guard at Northwestern, one of the top student athletes uh, in, in our program. And um, I, do, I do want to take a second uh, to introduce a, a, a GW alumni, uh, my wife, Laura, who graduated here in 1991, um, in, in so many respects, was the first lady of GW women's basketball for, for 20 years. So I do want to thank her. Um, and, and, you know, it, it, it would just take forever to thank everybody in the room that, that has touched our lives as a family, and uh, I, I, I do want to take a second because Dr. Chernak uh, brought us here, um, knowing knowing uh, knowing nothing about Washington D.C. I was the head coach at New Mexico State, even though I was from Philadelphia. My wife grew up on a farm in Oklahoma. Um, we we moved to the Milton Hilton down the street next to the hospital. Um, I told her don't watch the 11 o'clock news and. <laughs> She, she, uh, the rest is history. And, uh, you know, when our daughter was Megan, excuse me, when our daughter Megan was born, um, the things that you remember become the Collins family showing up and, uh, you know, the Chernak sending things to the hospital and, and how important, uh, uh, those things were to our lives and moving here. And, and, um, you know, we never thought we would leave and, uh, circumstances took us, took us to what we're doing now, but we'll always be GW. It'll always be our family, and, and that will never change. Um, so I, I do want to thank people that have touched our lives. Uh, I, I had the opportunity to work for Jack Cavance for uh, 15 years. Um, five of those years he was on the men's committee, so he never bothered me those years. Uh, <laughs> all he cared about was, he, he said, Joe, you make the tournament? I said, yeah, Jack, we, we need to be a three seed. He said, I'll take care of it. So we end up a six seed. <laughs> Connecticut be a one seed, and, uh, and the rest is history, and, and uh, they, they were great days, and, and I can't tell you what it was like to, to, uh, be, to be part of that, and Dr. Chernak, we were talking earlier, what it was, part to be, what it was like to be part of GW in the 90s, coming here, and, and all, the, all the great people, and the support, and it was a, just a special time, programs exploded, and um, I, I do want to thank some special people that um, ha have helped my career, such as uh, Lynn George, who, who made, uh, uh, and Pat Sullivan and Sheila Hoban, that we had a fight for everything in 1989, 1990, and uh, they stuck their neck out, Mary Jo Warner, for me, uh, and, and for women's sports here. And, and you know, every, everybody's benefited from that. So um, I do want to thank them. I do want to thank my Philadelphia family that made the trip today, that came to every GW event. Uh, my sister, my brother, my brother-in-law's sister-in-law, you got a mixed match. And people have just supported us over the years. They, they come to every game in Philadelphia, every game, men, anything GW is part of. Their, their son graduated from GW, their daughter went to GW, and, and um, this, this is our family and our home. Um, to, win, to win college basketball games is really hard. Uh, when you have great players, it's a lot easier. Um, when you have the opportunity to coach, I have two captains that are in the room with me. I just would like for them to stand up if they could. Uh, great Sarah Joe Lawrence, who's uh, about your, who, who won the Arthur Ashe Award as a distinguished uh, two-time uh, student athlete of the year in, in college athletics. She won't tell you that, but to be able to coach her every day um, and then Mandisa Turner, uh, who's one of our captains on our great team in 1996-97, uh, whose brother Hodge is now coaching in the men's program. So uh, Mandisa was a captain on a team that beat uh, UCLA, Duke, and North Carolina, the number one team in the country in the NCAA tournament. And I asked George Solomon if he could write about us. He said, call me back when you do something good. Um, <laughs> And I'm like, what else we got to do? And uh, probably the hard, the greatest win we had was beating the number one team in the, in the NCAA tournament. And then the greatest loss we had was losing the next two days later to Notre Dame, um, who I still got to recruit against every day. So that, that hurt. But when you have Mandisa Turner's and Sarah Joe Lawrence's, your life 
as a coach is a lot easier. Um, so I, I do want to thank them for coming today and, and being able to share in that. Um, last, uh, and, and I'll, I'll get out of your way, I try not to be a Valvano. Um, Alan and, and everybody that, that just, just really helped me along the line, along the way, to Jack who helped me, um, to my mentor, as Jack mentioned, in coaching, to be at a school where every day I could walk in and talk to Red Auerbach, talk to Bob Talent, talk to Jack Cavance. Uh, these are college, legendary basketball people. And um, to, to be part of that, uh, I will never forget. So um, uh, on, on behalf of the McEwen family, it's a great honor to be part, to be part of this class. And uh, uh, again, I do want to thank Coach Auerbach because he saved my job three times um, o over the pier when Rob Aides tried to get me to go to New York. <laughs> and uh, I had to come back and talk Jack into, into, into hiring me again. So, um, again, these are, these are special times. I apologize for rambling. Uh, I, this will always be our family. Uh, and, and, again, thanks very much for including me in this class. Thank you, Joe. <clears throat> Got to make sure my voice is here for tonight's game, too. <laughs> Chris Monroe scored 2,249 points during his four-year career as the student athlete at GW from 1999 to 2003. He was the, that was the most of any student athlete in the 98 seasons of Colonial's men's basketball. A three-time Atlantic 10 Player of the Week, Chris Monroe, his career point total is also the third most of any player in Atlantic 10 Conference history. He also ranks 10th all-time in rebounding with 712 career boards, making him one of the just four players to be inside the program's career top 10 in both scoring and rebounding. Chris Monroe starred at Good Council High School in nearby Hyattsville, Maryland before attending GW. He was named to the Atlantic 10 All-Rookie Team as a freshman in 2000 and followed with an A-10 All-Conference honor each of the following three seasons. Third Team All-Conference in 2001, Second Team All-Conference in 2002, and First Team All-Conference in 2003. A three-time Team Most Valuable Player, Monroe also holds GW's career records in free throws made and attempted, and he now plays professionally in the Ukraine. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Monroe understandably couldn't be here today. But please turn your attention now to the screen for a special video presentation from Chris. Hello, everybody. Um, I want to thank George Washington University for recognizing me for this prestigious honor. I also want to apologize for not being able to accept the award in person, but I do have a good excuse. I'm currently playing in the Ukraine for the city of Yuzhny, which is about 45 minutes outside of Odessa. Still representing GW. Behind me is the gym where we play our games. Um, and it's also minus something out here right now, so I'm going to make this as brief as possible. Um, I would like to start off by saying this. No accomplishment is made without great sacrifice. And it's not just personal sacrifices. It's the sacrifices of those around you that put you in a position so that you can achieve great things. And I'm going to highlight those people that helped me get to where I am today. Um, First and foremost, I would like to thank God for thank my family for their sacrifices. I'd like to thank my mother for standing by me for all the decisions I made to help me become the man I am today. I would like to thank my father for coming to every single one of my games. And I would also like to thank my Aunt Paula for being a backbone for my family and always being there for my family when we needed you. I want to thank my coaches, Tom Penders and Bonzi Colson for not only giving me the opportunity and having belief in me, but giving me a platform to showcase my skills. I also want to thank my teammates, Pops Mr. Bonsu, Mike Hall, TJ Thompson, Ray Colucci, just to name a few. I would also like to thank the George Washington administration, Jack Advance, Don Perno, Ed McKee, 
but especially Karen Urkel for helping me not only become the best student athlete I can be, but helping me graduate on time. Her sacrifice in time was everything that I needed while I was there. Um, I would like to thank Chris Hensley for keeping me healthy as a throughout college and as a pro. Even though you are a Giants fan and I am a Redskins fan, that's another story. Um, I would like to also thank Bob Chernak for not only being one of my biggest fans and supporters, but while I was in college, but also being a mentor afterwards, helping me continue my my education at George Washington University. And I'd also like to thank the late great Red Arbat for a quote that he gave me and he told me my freshman year in the Smith Center. He said to me, he said, don't let what you can't do stop what you can do. That quote, those words, define who I am as a basketball player and as a man. So I'm going to leave you guys with this. They say that basketball develops character. I think basketball reveals character. For all the best teams, the players sacrifice for the team. All the people I name are part of my team. They sacrifice for me to be in a position where I can be today. Just like everybody sacrificed for Jordan for him to be in a position to hit the game winning shots. Everybody played a role. And I want to thank everybody for everything that they did for me. Members of the Monroe family are here today to accept Chris Monroe's plaque. I will say this very briefly. I'd like to thank everyone here at GW for helping my son grow into the man he is today. When he came, he was a 16, 17-year-old teenager from the city, didn't know what he was going to do, but he thought he was going to the league. And I found out by the time he was 18 that he had a head on his shoulders. He had been listening to the things I had been saying <laughs> that I thought were going out the other ear. And he has presented himself. And it's all because he had the opportunity to grow and develop at GW. Thank you all so very, very much. Thank you, Ms. Monroe. Keeping in the basketball vein, Shante Rogers helped GW to four postseason appearances in his four seasons, including trips to the NCAA tournament in 1996, 1998, and 1999, and an NIT bid in 1997. Standing 5-4 his senior season in 1999 is recognized as one of the best single season performances in the program and in Atlantic 10 history. Rogers was named the Atlantic 10 Player of the Year and the Francis Pomeroy Naismith Award winner as the nation's top senior men's basketball player under six foot tall that season. He led the Atlantic 10 with 20.7 points per game and 6.8 assists per contest. He paced the nation with 103 steals in guiding the Colonials to a 20 and nine overall record and an NCAA tournament appearance. The Baltimore Prod holds GW's program records in assists and steals and ranks sixth all time with 1,701 points. He also owns single season marks with 86 three-pointers, 196 assists, and 103 steals. 
Rodgers earned A-10 all-conference accolades all four seasons, including all defensive team awards from 97 through 99. He was on the A-10 all-rookie team in 1996, the A-10 third team in 97, the A-10 second team in 98, and the A-10 first team honors in 1999. He is still the only George Washington player ever chosen as the Atlantic 10 Men's Basketball Player of the Year. A three-time team MVP, he cemented his name in Colonial's lore in his final game at Charles E. Smith Center. When battling the flu, he hit a game-winning three-pointer at the buzzer to give George Washington a 77-74 victory over Xavier and a share of the 1999 A-10 regular season title. Ladies and gentlemen, Shantae Rogers. Good afternoon. Y'all laughing because I got my teammate right here with me, right? <laughs> yeah, we go hand in hand. Four strong years, 11, 12 years professionally in Europe together. Not on the same team, but we played against each other a lot. This is a very important day for me and the Rogers family. It's an honor to be inducted to the GW Hall of Fame as a native of Baltimore, Maryland. I was privileged to play in front of so many fans, so many loyal fans in my college career. I had great coaches, great teammates. Win and loss, I learned valuable lessons. Those lessons helped me in my 12-year professional career, and contacts I maintain are helping me establish a coaching career. I will also cherish, cherish the memories I made during the time here at GW. I will always strive to uphold a reputation as I embark on new chapters of my life. Now I want to thank the people that made all this possible for me. I want to thank the Heavenly Father first and foremost. I want to thank my mom, my aunt, that whole table over there, number nine. That whole table over there, number nine. My son. I also want to thank Andrew. Stand up, Andrew. This is the guy that inducted me that, you know, had gave me the vote. I'm thankful for you. <laughs> right. I want to thank Diego, my teammate. He always been there for me. I even talked to Chris. I talked to Chris a lot overseas. He came through France when I was there. You know, I kind of talked. He was having a tough time with the, with the coach, so I kind of tried to be a mentor because I was the older guy at the time. There's a special lady here tonight that I, I really, really, really want to thank. Her name, I call her K.E. Her name is Karen Urkel. Karen, can you stand up, please? If it wasn't for this lady in my life at GW, coming from Baltimore, Maryland, public school system, I would have had a real, real tough time here. I came back a couple of times to finish up. I just finished up my degree in the summer.
current, current is, she need to be standing right here because she need to be inducted to the Hall of Fame in my career. <laughs> Bob, Jack, I had great years with y'all. You always made me feel comfortable. Memories, Bob gave me a, a board with a lot of posters and memories. I appreciate that a lot. And my family can have something now to, you know, remember me for the GW days. Because my kid, my son Terrell is over there now, but he was real young, real young at the time. So thank you, Bob, for that. Yego. Yego. This is the this is the guy that probably will be standing here next. I mean, he's a he's a great guy. He work here now. You know, he what else you want me to say about you, Yego? <laughs> no, I'm not trying to lead nothing out, you know. I don't want to lead nothing out. He's a great oh, he's a he graduated a year before. So he was in grad school our senior year, and I was proud of that because I had to try to graduate. I had to try to, you know, graduate just to be on a pedestal like he was academically. And then once again, current uncle, I can't say, I don't have the words to say how much you really mean to me, Karen. You mean to us, my family, my mom's back there. You already know what you mean to me. The reason why I'm here today. And I want to thank everybody here for the recognition that they gave me. Thank you. Jim Tarr competed in both number one singles and number one double spots throughout three of his four seasons as a standout for the George Washington men's tennis team. During Tarr's tenure, GW was a member of the Southern Athletic Conference, and on the strength of his play, the Colonials won three straight Southern Conference championships. Tarr won both singles and doubles conference championships three straight years from 1958 to 1960, and two of his doubles crowns were won with his brother and his teammate, Jack Tarr, in 1958 and 1959. Through his career, though his career concluded 51 years ago, Tarr still holds a spot in the Southern Conference record books. Amongst the conference leaders for most individual doubles titles won, Tarr sits atop the list tied with four others, three conference doubles titles. He also is tied for the first with two others for most combined conference titles with six. Tarr worked for Delta Airlines for over 30 years, serving as a senior captain airline pilot. He also served as a helicopter pilot during the Vietnam War. Tar passed away in March of 1995 after battling cancer. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jack Tar to the stage on behalf of his brother, Jim. Actually, when you saw the 1960 here, you probably thought there was a typo, because we have the 2002 and everyone's all young, but some of us are still around. Actually, uh, we were here before the Hall of Fame started, it looks like. Uh, and uh, one correction, my brother played number one singles for four years. Uh, I played number one my freshman year, then he came the next year and everything was gone as far as that was concerned. But, and he was number one doubles for four years also. Uh, this is even though he's not here, and as a matter of fact, uh, he, would, he would not have wanted to be uh, nominated for the Hall of Fame. He would not have agreed to, but it's been great for us because his widow, Betty Jo, is here from Atlanta and, and is with us now. We have had a chance to talk. And uh, his uh, older son, Jim, is here, also a Delta pilot, uh, and Jim and his wife, Stephanie. 
and uh, two of our teammates are here uh, from those those years. Saul Leibowitz, who is a freshman with me, and uh, and uh, Richard Frisch Fishman. And this has been a chance for my beautiful wife Casey to learn about my brother because she didn't meet him. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, as I read the paper about all of you, and I see so many wonderful athletes and, and people. It's wonderful to meet many of you and to, to actually see you in person. So on behalf of the Tar family, thank you very much. Thank you, Jack. Ingrid Wicker McCree was a member of the George Washington women's volleyball team from 1985 to 1989 and graduated with a degree in criminal justice. Wicker McCree began her professional career at the North Carolina Central Universities as a head coach of both the women's volleyball team and softball programs and became the first coach in school history to win conference championships in multiple sports with the NCCU's first ever conference titles in softball and volleyball. She later transitioned into athletics administration and after serving as NCCU's Associate Athletics Director for Internal Affairs, Wicker McCree currently serves as the NCCU's Director of Athletics, a position she has held since the spring of 2008. Wicker McCree is also a three-time Central Intercollegiate Athletic Association Volleyball Coach of the Year and she was inducted into the NCCU Athletic Hall of Fame in 2004. She has served in a variety of leadership positions in both conference and national level organizations, most notably as president of the CIAA Executive Board from 04 to 06. She is just the second woman to ever hold the position in league's history. In addition, Wicker McCree served as a member of the NCAA's Division II Legislation Committee from 2003 to 2007. In recognition of her work, she received the CIAA Leadership Award for service and was named the CIAA Senior Woman Administrator of the Year in the spring of 2006. This season, in their first year of eligibility to be selected for the men's basketball NCAA tournament, a conference tournament win next month would give Wicker McCree's NCCU Eagles their first ever ticket to the big dance and March Madness. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ingrid Wicker McCree. Good afternoon. I want to first say it is such indeed an honor to be recognized today with this distinguished group of inductees. Congratulations to you all, as this is a truly a remarkable accomplishment. I also want to thank the George Washington University Hall of Fame Selection Committee for approving my best friend and Hall of Famer, Tracy Early's recommendation. Working in athletics, I understand and truly appreciate the significance of joining the ranks of other GW notables, and now I'm so excited to be a part of GW history. As Mary Jo told me, I only have three to five minutes, and then I got an email yesterday from Sarah that says two to three minutes, <laughs> <laughs> which I thought, well, by the time I recognize everyone that's here, um, that'll be it. So I will try to be very, very brief. First, I would like to give all the glory to God for designing the roadmap for my life. I have been truly blessed, and without his guidance, none of this would have been possible. I was raised in a family steeped in the belief that as long as you have faith in God, you will never be alone, and you can accomplish all of your dreams. I want to say thank you to Bethany. Will you please stand? Bethany, thank you so very much for working so hard to accommodate all my family and friends. I know I drove her crazy, but thank you for making this day so special. Now I'd like to just recognize a village of people who have been integral to my personal and professional development. And if you please stand and remain standing. My husband, Gino McCree, my daughter, Sydney McCree, 
My daughter Alexi and son Quentin could not be here today. People are always asking me how do I handle being a wife and a mother and an athletic director, and I say it takes an extremely supportive husband and family, and I admire his patience and unselfishness for allowing me to be accessible uh, <laughs> to all of our student athletes and coaches around the clock, and I truly mean around the clock. My parents, Mr. Floyd Wicker and Dr. Evelyn Wicker, please stand. My brother, Reverend Floyd Wicker Jr. and his friend Marla. My parents always instilled in me to always do your best and some of the young ladies in the back know that I've I always encouraged them by saying that so those words have governed my personal and professional life. I would like to recognize my mother and father-in-law, Mr. Cletus and Sandra Gill, my sister-in-law Tara Caldwell, now, please be reminded that I did send an email out to everyone saying I'm going to call you out in groups because I can't call out everybody's names. My aunts and uncles, my extended aunts and uncles and cousins, my best friends, stay, stand up, stand up, my best friends, my NCCU colleagues, and in particular, Dr. Kevin Rome, who is our Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs, as I call him, my co-athletic director. My professional colleagues and friends, China Jew, the athletic director at Queens University of New York, and Melody Webb, your own assistant athletic director for business at GW. My GW teammates, Cinnamon, Corinne, I'll stand, and your spouses. And my coach, Do coach Dr. Pat Sullivan, and a very special group of young women who I have had the pleasure of coaching and mentoring, and they are actually the last group of young women that I coached um, in 2005. Uh, would you please stand, members of the NCCU women's volleyball team. Thank you. And they surprised me today. I had no idea that they were going to be here, so I was just ecstatic to see them when I walked through the door. I also want to just say thank you to our Chancellor, Dr. Charlie Nelms, uh, for giving me the opportunity. There's not very many women uh, in the field as athletic directors, uh, but he saw fit to give me the opportunity to represent uh, the 31 of us in Division I, so that's not very many. Also, Susan Hester, our Chief of Staff, and Johnny Sutherland. These are my mentors, my role models, my best friends, uh, who has just been, just, uh, I'm a blessed, I'm very blessed to have all of them in my life. And so I want to say thank you for your travels here uh, today to share with me. Briefly, how GW has contributed to my growth. Uh, I remember transitions in leadership was one way. Uh, I remember my sophomore year when Dr. S Coach Sullivan told us that she was going to retire. And that was very devastating to us all. That was our coach. And we felt like we were losing a mother and a best friend. So our next coach, Coach Cindy Laughlin, we really gave her a tough time. Um, we just didn't, we couldn't fathom playing for someone else. And so it was a couple of tough years for us, but we made it through. But that experience taught me how when I became the only the second coach in the history of the NCCU's volleyball program, I can remember how I felt as a student athlete and losing someone special. So I was better able to help the young ladies that I uh, inherited to cope with that type of change in leadership. As an administrator now, uh, I've had to make some changes in, in head coaches and it's very difficult. But I also know how important it is to make sure that those student athletes from those teams are a part of that selection process. Because in the end of the day, it is about the student. Experiencing the world. I believe the geographical location of George Washington University afforded me the best opportunity to explore the world within 68.3 square miles. Our diverse student population, observing and participating in many of the political marches, working on Capitol Hill during my, my sophomore and junior years, interning in the DC jail, being able to walk four blocks and just explore the history of our nation 
was completely amazing and enhanced my, my view of the world we live in. And third, long, lifelong friendships. The friendships developed during my tenure at GW has been one of a constant in my life. Tracy Early is and was a friend, a roommate, my maid of honor twice. But we got it right this time, Tracy. <laughs> we got it right. <laughs> To have the opportunity to compete on the same team with someone from your hometown as I did with Cinnamon Burnham, Burnham Bowser, to have Crystal Alderfer from Denver, Colorado come out and visit me about two years ago after not seeing her in 21 years, linking up with former teammates on Facebook and still being referred to as Ingi by Corinne Thompson. And what we're always telling our student athletes is those four or five years that you're going to be in school are so important about the people who you meet and the things you do. Um, and this is so true. So I'm so blessed to have met these individuals while at GW. In closing, just two things that I would just like to say um, and encourage everyone to do. First is to give back. Never did I understand how important it was until I put these shoes on, um, how important it is to give back. Omar Bell, who's an assistant uh, director for development here, came to my office in Durham and sat and talked to me for two hours about just my experiences at GW. And I knew then how important GW played a role in my life and determined I was going to continue to give back. And I encourage you, if you didn't go to GW, give back to another institution of higher education. We owe that to our youth. And lastly, transformational experiences. To the staff at GW, the experiences we give our student athletes are the most precious. Ensuring that you choose the right coaches and administrators is paramount to the success of this program. They can help transform the way our youth think, believe, and act. Dr. Sullivan is a genuine person. She was honest, fair, trustworthy, and supportive. The qualities you want to see in any leader. Because we had the opportunity to travel all around the country and represent this university, because we were given the best academic support by Ms. Sheila Hoban, because we learned how to deal effectively with the media through Mr. Ed McKee, because we learned how to become better athletes through our assistant coaches, Bob Westbrook, David Barkley, and Kevin Kirk. Because of all of this, my experience was transformational. I challenge the current athletic staff at GW and NCCU to continue providing these types of experiences to the current and future Colonials and Eagles to transform their lives forever. Thank you. How about another round of applause for the 2012 inductees of the George Washington Athletic Hall of Fame. And of course, a reminder, George Washington men's basketball team is going to take on St. Joe's at four at the Smith Center, which is just a couple of blocks away. We'll be broadcasting the game there. And on behalf of Chairman Ramsey, President Knapp, Dr. Chernak, Patrick Nero, and everyone involved in George Washington athletics and recreation, we want to thank you very much for coming out today, and please have a great weekend, and we'll see you at the game. Thanks, everyone. Thank